Welcome to the utility room. Every house has one, but one of the challenges that comes with uh, Starlink Internet is they literally provide a satellite. They don't provide an install guy. They don't have some satellite company that runs around and does the install for you. As you've seen in my unboxing, what you get is a kit in a box. Everybody has a utility room like this, and it can be a real challenge figuring out how do I get from where the satellite gets installed to where it gets connected to the rest of the house. Now, there may be a few strategies you want to think about, right? Not everybody has a, you know, a, a partial rack mounted on the wall um, for network gear. Not everybody has a, an upgraded um, point of presence for them to bring all their house wiring into. Um, I redid all these after we moved in back in February. Um, if it's recent construction, it'll probably have a smaller box like this um, that you can connect into, and that'll make it a lot easier uh, in order to be able to get your internet to the rest of the house. Um, the, the other option is the kit that comes with the Starlink satellite includes a wireless router. If you don't get the Ethernet adapter, um, it may be as easy as, you know, drilling a hole through the wall in the right place and positioning that router in one of the rooms in the house that you can simply get to from the rest of the house. For me, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Thankfully, thanks to Starlink support, I already know that the satellite has to be installed on the north face of the house. This is the north face of the, the house. It's outside the garage. And... The challenge I have is uh, I'm going to have to put that long wall mount up here at the top of the wall. You have to remember when you get the Starlink satellite, it doesn't come with an easy installer service. You don't just ring up a place and have an installation technician come out to your house, which means you have to be ready to do that planning or you have to have an electrician that can do that kind of work for you. Uh, or a local satellite installer, something like that. A lot of local satellite installers won't come out and do installs in the kind of rural areas where Starlink customers are primarily located right now. That's actually the case for me. I've got a friend who's a electrician. He'd be willing to do it for me, but I have most of the skills that I have, so I'd like to save the money and do it myself. There's a few things I'm going to have to plan. One of those things is actually uh, installing the mount and the satellite on top of this wall. One of those things is how to get the cabling back to where I can share that internet with the rest of the house and just use it day to day. And we'll look at a few of those concerns. But first, I have to make sure that the satellite, once I install it, actually stays where I put it. Because this is the north side of the house in Northern Colorado, the greatest wind loads are actually on this side of the house. And we get uh, 60 mile an hour gusts, probably three or four times a year at least. And we get a lot of days where 30 and 40 mile an hour gusts are just a fact of life. Um, because it's the north side of the house, uh, our winds often come from the north and during snowstorms, uh, we'll get what they call upslope flow, which means they'll come out of the east, which is unusual, push up against the mountains and create snowstorms. On this side of the house, wind can come from almost any direction, of course, except for the house. So uh, we have to make sure that the installation we do on this side is rock solid. One of the other questions could be, why not just use a ground-based install? I mean, after all, they provide a tripod. Well, this is the reason why. This was a blow-up that we tried to run this year um, over the Christmas holiday. It really didn't work out. And we had some very heavy-duty stakes in the ground. In fact, the, the stakes are still here. But what we found is they actually do rip out. Um, the, the winds here are so strong that it'll grab this fabric, even with the weight of a motor and the weight of the stakes in the ground. And uh, it essentially ripped it apart. Because of the wind loads here, the... Um, tripod with the stake holes, even with a very strong stake, actually will not provide us the stability that we need. So in, in my case, I've considered the mounting options and the only possible option for me is a long wall mount. 
One of the options that you may have is to use the existing wiring in the house to help get the cabling from your satellite uh, for Starlink all the way back to wherever you're going to run the internet to the rest of the house, uh, especially if you have the ethernet adapter. The cable that comes out of the satellite itself is a custom cable, so you can't just link into um, satellite cabling like we have out here. But what I could do is I could put the ethernet adapter on the other side of this wall and then uh, connect in the network cable to one of the existing feed cables on the outside of the, the house. I can't actually do that in this case uh, because I actually do have a um, provider of five gigahertz wireless point to point internet today. And I don't want to replace that. I want to be able to run both side by side for a period of time until I have full confidence in Starlink. That means that I have to have a different strategy for how to get it back into the house. Once we come through the wall, in this white space area where uh, several pieces of drywall come together. We're actually going to go around the top of the wall inside the garage um, using the clips that Starlink provides to hold up the cable. We're going to go around the top of the garage wall. This is going to keep it out of the way of kids, pets, um, anything that we might install later. And our planning includes a long cable to make sure that we have the full height and length that we need to get to this wall. This white pipe that you see is the radon exhaust pipe and the radon exhaust pipe comes down the wall and has a penetration through the wall in order to get into the utility room. We're going to need um, the equipment to make sure that we can drill the depth of the wall. That means a longer drill bit uh, and the strategy to make sure that I've created enough space that the cable with the connector can go all the way through the wall. For an installation on the external wall of the garage, we still have to come in from the garage into the utility room. It should be the cable off of the satellite, the extension cable that I purchased. This vertical white pipe that you see is the radon exhaust, and the wooden wall that it is leading to is actually a external wall into the garage. So we're going to come in through that wall, run across the floor joists in the utility room, through the wall above the networking rack. We're going to collect up with the other telecom cables that are already exist in the house, including the external cable from our existing internet, and enter the point of presence. I have plenty of room inside this box for the additional equipment that comes from Starlink. In my case, it's going to be two devices. The first device that gets connected in will be the Ethernet adapter, and the second device will be the actual Starlink router that handles all the logic and connectivity of the ground terminal. It will come on a network cable out of my point of presence in order to bring the internet signal into my wall-mounted network rack. And my Unify Dream Machine Pro has the ability to do failover between two WAN internet connections, so two internet providers, if you will. The yellow cable right now is my existing provider. That will probably become my backup while I'm on Starlink. Uh, and I'll add a transceiver into the ports over here in order to be able to accommodate both internet providers at the same time. Um, one of the things that you're going to have to look at for your family in getting Starlink is whether you are completely replacing your existing internet provider or you're supplementing it. In my case, for my family, just given that I work in tech um, for my full-time job that makes it possible for us to have a a homestead and everything else. We're probably going to use both in order to have better reliability, better access to the internet, better able to do meetings, things like that. So in the final planning bits to do the installation, I also have to make sure that I have the right tools. So in this case, I've made sure that I have a nice high torque, high speed uh, drill with appropriate batteries. Uh, I've also thought about making sure that I have a, uh, a socket that's got the strength and torque to be able to install the wall arm. Well, one of the things that I realized while I was planning this 
is a half inch uh, socket may have a head that is too large to actually get in and secure the screw. This is one of those things that you're only going to find out, and a bad time to find this out is when you're at the top of the ladder. So check your tools. Make sure you have the right tools before you go outside and get on top of the ladder. The other thing that I realized is um, while they include instructions that are step-by-step -step for setting up things like this, this wall arm, I can't follow those instructions because I've upgraded to a 3 8 inch um, by 4-inch uh, lag bolt. So in order to do that, I have to make sure that I've upgraded my drill bit to create the pilot hole to do that. Uh, if you make any hardware changes or any install changes, make sure that you've adjusted your tools and you've tested out your approach beforehand to avoid snags during install. If you're using one of the alternative mounts, I strongly suggest getting uh, on a ladder, looking at the area that you're doing the install, because I'm using a wall mount, what I have is a really good stud finder and just a regular piece of sidewall chalk. What I'm doing is I'm marking the stud so that I know exactly where to do the mount. Uh, and then I actually asked Lauren to go ahead and hand me the mount itself so I could just put it up there and eyeball where it'll do the install. Uh, it's really good that I did this because when she handed me the mount and I put it up there, I realized actually fairly quickly that it's not going to clear the gutter, which means I'm going to have to use a piece of wall spacing exterior rated board in order to give me some additional distance to cover the eave. So summarizing the installation, the first thing is I know I have to install on the north face. In order to clear the gutter outside, I'm going to have to add a wall board to install the long arm mount because the long arm mount from Starlink is not enough to clear my eave uh, and my gutter. I'm going to have to use uh, some method of installing the cable through the wall. In the garage, I'll route my cable around the top of the garage and bring it to a place where I can penetrate into the utility room. In order to get into the utility room, I have to go through a standard wall plus uh, a wooden barrier in the utility room itself. I'll need to route my cable around the utility room and end up terminating it in my telecom box. Along the way, I learned a few lessons. One of those lessons is that I'm going to need that mounting board. This is why I did planning before just getting on the ladder and attempting to do the install. I'm upgrading to 3 8 inch lag bolts for uh, the wind load that comes on the north side of the house and the fact that I'm going to have to use a mounting board put into a, a couple of studs. I'm going to use a very wide board like a 2 by 8 or 2 by 10 outdoor rated in order to make sure that I've got the strength and leverage that potentially the, the wind loads could put on a satellite like this. I have a one and a quarter inch um, hole bore to get through the concrete board that is my siding uh, and give me access to the wall behind it in order to be able to run my cable. Uh, I'll then use fire block to be able to seal that hole. And I'm gonna need a long drill bit to penetrate from the garage into the utility space both to be able to get through the wall itself, but also to be able to get through that barrier wall that's in the utility space. And then once I actually route around to where the telecom box is, I need to make sure I've got power available at that telecom box. And I'm gonna use a UPS to be able to deal with uh, power spikes, power lags, um, to protect the box, but also to protect against um, losing the internet during a power outage. Doing your planning ahead of time is extremely important to make sure that you will end up with a successful Starlink satellite experience.